Oh, hey guys. I see you. Thanks for stopping back by the channel. So I just wanted to throw a quick one together. Um, answer a couple questions actually I got. Uh, Justin Dow did a video on it. You know, you know, you guys out there that want to start their own shop or own their own repair business, however, um, just go maybe through some of the things that uh, took me to get to where I am, maybe why I did what I did, maybe a little bit of background where I came from, some of my schooling. I'm sure some of you guys are out there already know. Obviously, you need schooling and all that stuff, but we'll talk about it. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys. So start off by saying, you know, I've been wrenching for 20 years. I mean, it's obviously you guys know the mechanics out there. I mean, if you're a mechanic, obviously you choose to be a mechanic because you, you like what you do. You love what you do. It's that's step one. I mean, that's one of the main reasons I became a mechanic because I enjoyed working on cars. Even when I was a kid, I mean, I, I just enjoyed working with my hands and working with tools, you know, taking remotes apart, taking toys apart when you're a kid. Um, I mean, another reason is obviously my dad owned a shop and a used car lot, um, so, you know, obviously being born into it, but my brother, my older brother and my younger brother, they didn't become a mechanic, so it's not like the whole family chose to do it, but I personally did, maybe mostly because my dad pushed me towards it, or just because I like doing it, you know, it is what it is. I always thought I'd run my old man's shop, and uh, always figured I'd have my own shop anyways when I was younger, you know, in my 20s and teens and stuff like that, but it didn't end up being like that. You know, my dad's partner and him ran his place into the ground before he retired. And, you know, by the time I was ready, financially stable and out of school, his shop was pretty much closed down. So, you know, I've worked at, uh, I've worked at the dealerships. I've worked at the big chain shops, you know, your Meineke, Midas's, Goodyear's, all in the area here. I've worked at independent shops. I've worked with my old man. I mean, it's, it's something that I knew I wanted to do I was already doing it for a while. Yes, I've tried other things, um, but it just wasn't for me. This was my calling. I mean, I, I felt at home with a wrench in my hand and going home dirty and having to clean up before you get it, even get into your car. It's just something you got to love to do. But you guys out there thinking about you know getting your own shop or getting ready to own your own shop or working towards getting your own shop, it's possible. I mean, it's not that hard. Obviously, you got to have the right schooling and experience you know depending on what you want to do whether you want to do like I did and you know rent to own a building and just have the business own the business and rent a building from somebody whether you buy a pre-existing business whether you start something from scratch out of your garage or however it is but experience knowledge you know comes first all that stuff and then obviously having the correct finances the correct resources to you know have the right equipment and tools to get this stuff done on people's cars you know most of that stuff I mean I already had it's you know coming into this place that there's just a few things I had to get but the tools I had the schooling I had you know obviously I saved for it for years and years so financially I was ready for it kinda I probably could have waited a little bit I rushed it but I'm glad I did now but it was a scary process I mean it's uh, it took a lot it took a lot out of me, a lot of stress, you know, but for me to profit my first year, you know, I was blessed for that, but it's sometimes it's not going to be the case for most people. You know, you some people, even some of the old bosses that I've worked for, you know, they they ran their business in the red for a long time. I mean, yes, they're good now, but I see shops that I grew up knowing down the street that are closed down now because, you know, this industry's forever changing. You know, good help is hard to find. That's one of the problems I have here is finding a, you know, a good technician or someone not necessarily worth because I've had good techs work here either something else came up um, you know one went to the Air Force um, the other one ended up moving because his wife got a better job so he moved away things like that but you know that's one of my main problems here is finding good help to help me here I mean I'm looking at other shops further south from here getting ready to open up my second shop actually um, and it's just that's number one is your, your employees it's you got to be able to take care of them obviously what entails of owning your own shop you got to have your business license you got to have insurance you got to have workman's comp for your employees 
you got to have you know ins you got to offer them insurance or if you have a 401k you got to offer that to your employees you got to worry about health care for them you got to worry about health care for yourself paying your taxes I mean I don't get any help for an employer I, I have to pay my own health insurance I have to everything I gotta pay my own way and then in most states when you're in business for yourself you gotta pay your federal and state taxes plus they add on another 15 percent for being bit in business for yourself so I mean there's a sometimes it feels like there's more cons and pros to it but you know being able to obviously show up a couple minutes late you know things like that that doesn't outweigh the stress of making sure that there's gonna be work here making sure that I'm gonna make my overhead for the month making sure that I'm getting the best deals on quality parts and finding quality parts for these cars doing my researches on some of these parts these vendors wanna sell me that are just junk that I would never use on a customers car keeping your customers happy advertising for yourself whether it be through coupons or internet or any of that stuff word of mouth is obviously one of my main things here because I'm real local you know I like to help out the police station I like to help out the schools I like to you know help out the fire department and things like that but you gotta stay forever one step ahead of it you know me working for an employer I never had to worry about that any of that stuff I mean I just went there did what I had to do if there was no work there was no work if if there was work I would work and make my money here if there's no work there's no me so I mean it's there's a lot more to it than people think, but it is possible. You guys out there, or you young guys, or you guys thinking about getting a shop, I, I can't say it enough. It is possible. Get all your ducks in a row. Come up with a game plan, whether you're going to buy into a shop, start one from scratch, rent a building, and run your business out of it no matter what you do. Do what I did. I, I was doing not only repair work, I was doing body work, custom subwoofer work, interior work. I mean, whatever it is, I'd have people call me on the phone and say, hey, you fix PlayStations? Yeah, bring it on down. I'll take a look at it. Small motor repair, snow blowers, whatever it was, I, they came. If, if money's green, money spends, if I could fix it or if there's a way I could help the customer out, have a good deal and fix what they need fixed, bring it on down. If it fits through my doors, I will work on it. I don't care if they have to land a pr private jet here. Bring it on in. If I have the right equipment and know-how and experience to get the job done, I will do it for you. So, I mean, it just is what it is. Now I've obviously mellowed out into, you know, what I'd like to do. Obviously, I actually did a lot of diesels, too, when I first opened. My neighbors here have a fleet of diesels. I, had, I did a lot of work for them. I've actually cut back on a lot of diesels. One, because the help here. But two, because I don't really need that work anymore. Obviously, I was pushing fleet accounts. I was pushing, you know, all sorts of accounts, working on buses. I mean, whatever it was. Whatever work came in, I was doing work for the, for the city. Uh, public water works I mean it whatever kind of work came through their door but like I said guys I've cut back on a lot of that stuff you know I like to stay you know independent but I like to work on you know mostly customers cars in the area things like that yes I like my fleet accounts but fleet accounts I don't want to depend on them you know and I know a lot of shops that have a lot of fleet work and they depend on a lot of fleet work and sometimes that fleet work comes you know whether it's from the county that they, you work for or the state you work for or whatever you know, if something happens to the state, you're the, the the repair shop's the last to get paid. And if you're depending on that work for you know to keep your guys busy or keep your shop afloat, and something happens to that union or that fleet account goes out of business or whatever, there goes half your business right there. So I like to keep you know good loyal customers. They tell their friends, their friends tell their friends, and it just keeps you keep keeping them happy. They keep coming back, tell them more, and next thing you know, you're in over your head, staying here till eight o'clock at night trying to get all this work done because you got too much work and not enough time in the day so but it is out there you want to own a shop it's possible man you just follow your dreams do what you gotta do it's a scary process all you other guys out there thinking about owning your own shop go for it I mean it's get everything in a row I can't stress it enough just make sure plan out everything you can and then also plan a little extra you know you, you kinda plan for the worst hope for the best and just for me and my wife and my shop, we were lucky, but I had a big customer clientele base. You know, I have a, I have family that came here and, and supported me. You know, any kind of work they need, they would bring their cars here and they would tell their friends, their friends, friends. Customer base is, is big, though. You got to have at least a decent, you know, you got to be making at least a couple grand, at least a grand a week with your own customers. You know, if you could put out at least a couple grand a week, I'd say a couple you could probably get by with a grand that's four thousand a week if you could at least get by on that on your own customer base if you're doing that now or doing side work and you're making a grand a week i mean you're pretty much ready get your business 
license or whatever your state provides, you know, have your ASCs, get whatever you have to can in a row because chances are you'll make it. I mean, it's just you keep that steady income. You know, and all you guys that are out there working for shops and having to do side hustles, I mean, I see it like this. If you have to do side hustles in order to survive, you should probably think about getting your own shop anyways or at least asking your boss for a raise because, I mean, you know, you're not making enough where you're working. You know, and we shouldn't have to do side work, us as mechanics. We should, you know, our employer should be able to supply us with enough cash to be able to live comfortably, especially if you're a good technician like I know most of you guys are out there. But then I want to touch on some of the, uh, you know, the stressful side of it. Obviously, you know, you, whether you have, uh, you know, an unruly customer or, you know, or you have uh, something I'm, you know, one I'm dealing with now where I, I'm doing a mechanics lean on the Rust Belt truck that we're trying to get to them. And I got to jump through all the hoops over here to, you know, get everything, get this title. The customer doesn't want to pay. You know, I got to deal with that. Now I'm out all that money we spent on his truck, which was like 1500 bucks. I mean, plus if, if we have storage, I add storage to it. I mean, it's, you know, I'm out money. You could take, an owner could take a loss like that. I mean, in a heartbeat overnight, you could lose thousands of dollars, you know. Um, anything happens to the building, you know, obviously your insurance, thievery. I mean, you get, you just come in here and whether you get robbed or you get something stolen from you by an employee or something like that or a customer steal, I mean, you could be out, you know. And then being a business owner, get ready to write some big checks because, I mean, you know, parts cost money, you know, rent costs money, your payroll costs money, insurance costs money. It's, I, I mean, I write some big checks each month. So, you know, you think, you think you make a profit until you pay all your bills at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter or end of the week, however you end up running your shop. And, I mean, that's pretty much all that's left for the owner. You know, we're the last to get paid. I've mentioned that in other videos. You know, we got to make sure that our employees are taken care of. we got to make sure our bills are taken care of. You know, we got to make sure the utilities are taken care of and all the vendors, oil, the stock. You know, after all said and done, we got to make sure we pay our taxes. You know, this, here it's the county, state, federal. I mean, it, it, they got taxes up to Wahoo over here. But, you know, after all said and done, I might go home with some money. I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know what I make until the end of the year, really, when it comes down to it. You know, I could have a, I could have a, I could think I'm pocketing it 30 grand for the month, and then next thing you know, I get hit with uh, federal taxes and I got to pay more, or I get hit with a $10,000 bill that I got to pay, you know, on my oil, or my, or I got to have my tires picked up that cost money, or get my waste oil picked up and things like that, the garbage picked up. You know, you never really know until all said and done. So it's, it's kind of a toss up. You don't really know what you're going to make. You know, unless you start a corporation and you're paying yourself a, a, a decent amount, but then really if you think about it, you're taking from your own business. And obviously starting off, that wouldn't be a smart move. You'll, you'll want to invest as much as you can, kind of take just enough what you need to survive your home life and su survive your personal life to pay your personal bills and then try to keep as much money in the business as you can to help it thrive, to build it, to, you know, do whatever you can with it, to grow. You know, like I said, it's... I would have made. I would have bought another shop a year ago if I had the help. It, and you know, it's just it's good help is hard to find. I can't stress that enough. You know, some of you, some of you YouTube mechanics out there, God, I would kill to have you work for me. I would, I would kill to have you guys out here. Some of you guys in the comment sections, tell me about your job, where you work. I would love for you to work for me. Gee, but good help is hard to find. In this area, at least, most of the mechanics around here either. You know, they've been a mechanic for a while. Where they're working, they're being well taken care of. So they, they don't. Who would want to leave a job like that? You know, some of them obviously don't want to work or you can't get the show up. You know, you get the bad apple sometimes. Um, but, I mean, but for the most part, it's it's just, it's hard to find. People don't, you know, or they don't know enough. You know, they come here and they want to work and they want to learn. But I just, you know, running a shop, I don't have a whole lot of time to train somebody. You know, if you haven't went to school or you ain't got no schooling or haven't been doing this for years, I, I, I don't have time to train somebody. So I got I to gotta have them come in with enough experience to at least get the ball rolling and then you know maybe we could show them from here from there but I can't put someone you know I can't put a, an experienced technicians on a customer's car and I can't put a customer's car in the hands of an inexperienced tech and then something happens to the customer or something happens to their car they mess something up I just I, I can't do that I wouldn't I wouldn't put my name on someone else's inexperienced work so that's just all the stress that goes about being a shop owner you know everything that goes along I mean it's tough it is it is tough it you know I know I know a lot of people probably thought about it and then kind of think of what it entails and what it takes and then they just say, no way, I'm, that's just not for me. Because sometimes I think it isn't for me either. You know, I, I, like I said, guys, I've said in past videos, 
I made really good money working for my last employer, really good money. And, and it was non-stress money. I mean, I'd come in, work my normal hours, get my book time, and steady have a nice paycheck each week and never had to worry about getting customers through the door, never had to worry about advertising, never had to worry about paying other bills or worry about the overhead they had. Now I do. But, you know, I guess it's uh, to one as their own. You know, you can make money in this business. We live okay, you know. I, I, I'm not the richest man in the world, but I think I'm doing okay. I know it's tough even just starting off as a tech. It's just as tough starting off as a business owner. So, you know, that's one of the reasons I remember being a tech. I've never forgot where I came from. I've never forgot my roots. That's why I help techs. That's why I do whatever I can to help you guys out because I've been there. I've done it, and I'm still doing it every day. You know, I, I mean, there's no one helping me out. It's just uh, something I like to do to give back because I know it's rough. This industry is tough, and I'm sure there's a change coming for us mechanics. I'm sure there is because I guarantee five or ten years there's going to be a mechanic shortage and that's just how it is. They're going to either have to bump the mechanics pay, they're going to either have to, you know, make make sure that you're qualified in schooling before coming to mechanic. I, I guarantee there's a change coming. I guarantee it. But like I said, guys, you guys out there want to start your own shop, it's possible. You know, just go ahead, do your research, have your schooling, make sure your finances are correct, make sure you got your customer base or 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 a, or a partner or someone you could count on to do it with you to kind of take some of the load off. Me, I have Lauren, I have my wife, you know, she's the heart of this business. She's the real face of the business. You know, I'm just the guy out there sweating and, you know, doing everything I can to uh, finish up these cars and do what I got to do to uh, make that money for the family. But it's a great life. I mean, it is what it is. I, I, I enjoy being a shop owner now. I couldn't say the same thing maybe five years ago. Yeah, I was in over my head, but you learn as you go. You learn as you progress, just like you guys out there, obviously, being a mechanic. We learn every day. So, just going to wrap this one up, guys. Just figure I'd give you a quick rant, quick story, quick background. But you guys out there thinking about being a shop owner, go for it. I, I, I give you my full support. And, you know, hey, sometimes you got to find out the hard way. you got to learn things the hard way. But at least follow your dream. You'll never know until you try. So, like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.